Hello YouTube, this is a stack of dimes. It's a CO2 weld on a 2 inch shaft filling a keyway. We're using 035 wire, E70 S3, 190 inches a minute, uh, wire feed 19 and a half volts, and 100% CO2 shielding. Um, as you see here, I do something that I call pulling the puddle and it may look like a cursive E, I don't know, but I pull out of the puddle quite a ways. And this, you need not to break arc to do this. You don't spot, you don't stitch, you don't do anything silly like that. Here, you can see by the little quarter inch nut down the bottom of the picture, that I'm nearing dime size dimes, and that's almost uh, eight inches long I'm welding there. And I just did that to see if I could break the corner moving the torch that way. So let's talk a little bit about how you got this pulling the puddle nonsense. Um, this is an overlay. Now it's 045 wire, 80% CO2, high CO2. And it's on a two inch round. You can see the workpiece traveling by, it's automated. And the uh, puddle is freezing about 12 o'clock or about an inch, inchish away from where the wire is. And uh, you can see that it's a very fluid puddle. Inductance will do that for you. It puts a lot of pressure in the arc and it puts a lot of heat over top of the, the puddle and, and, and it just stays fluid for a while. So when you get a puddle that, or uh, a bead that looks like that, then you can start to do some silly things. Um, how much pressure does inductance give you when you get a little bit? Well, you can see looking from the other side. We get a picture of it pushing into the edge of the shaft and it's down handing and pushing it up towards 12 o'clock. The wire is actually at about 2 o'clock on the shaft and uh, there's a lot of force going on in there and the little fireball and the bead are about the same size. Uh, open arc, that's a good thing with hard wire. That's where you want to see it. Um, so once you figure out and get your stuff set and you stepped on your welder, well that's what it looks like when you get done welding <laughs> with the overlay. So I've filled the key, you just saw the overlay. Um, so let's show you what the filling of the key looks like here. Well hopefully we get it, there it goes. I'm running about 24 inches uh, per minute torch travel and I had a poor viewing area and it looks like I've got too much stick out going on. And I'll run off and this would give you an idea how long it takes to travel. 8 inches at uh, 360 inches a minute for this. I'm running 160 to 175 amps with 035, 035 wire. It's definitely in globular. Um, here I've got to turn towards me and I've got a, bit, a little better look at the puddle and I'm letting it fill. But you see that I'm only getting, that's a quarter inch or half inch key, so I'm only getting like eighth inch legs on them corners. I need that to penetrate. So there's three passes in the shaft. Uh, you know, three beads at 360 inches, a minute wire feed, 23 volts, 100% CO2, and you're moving. There's after six beads, and I'm just about to the top of it. I like to be at the top on that one and just have it flat across the top and I'll do weep two weaves usually. But here I thought for the purposes of people that want to try that cursive E that's talked about when you get this weld jewelry on stuff they're using uh, automotive things and they really are nice looking beads when you see somebody do them. Um, this is the move that I have to make. And this, this shaft is about, uh, well, it's red when it comes out of the heating. In the, in the, uh, uh, use a little fire brick and have propane torches heated up. And then by the time I'm welding on it, it's back down to about 600. Very quickly comes up. And this thing stays hot until it's overlaid. Uh, in a second, that was a clockwise move, breaking down the key on the other side. But you'll see that I pull back. This is a counterclockwise move. I'm pulling way out of that puddle and looping back around. Now, the purpose of uh, me doing this is just to see if I can do what people think might go wrong with this bead. That is to trap slag or not get fusion. So normally when I uh, do this weld, it's just a little weave and it's no problem. Uh, you know, I don't get in trouble. This 
people say you can get in trouble with it, so I'm going to leave it on top of the shaft. I'm not going to grind it off before it gets in the overlay. I'll needle scale it to beat whatever slag I can off. But sure enough, when I turn it, um, it's going to tell the story. If I've trapped slag, or you know, didn't, or if I've covered up an inclusion, it'll show up either in the turning and grinding of the OD, and, or the cutting of the key seat. So we'll see. I've got three shafts in total out of a whole bunch of them that I've marked, and we'll see how it goes. If it goes poorly, well then. I've wasted an hour or two of my time. This is what one should look like when you're finished. This was returned to me. Um, looks like they got it assembled and then found out they needed another diameter and let it sit and rust for a year or two before sending it back to get another diameter fixed. That little line you saw is just from the scraper. Um, I don't have any of these finished machined right now that are fresh, but uh, this is what I expect my key seats to look like after I fill a key seat and put it back in. And all this stuff is direct hardening material, which explains the very high heats I work with and, uh, uh, and some of my methods. Anyway, uh, there's the dimes and the pollen, and thanks for watching.